swarm trap video that we just showed. Basically, it's our resource hive. You can see it in the background. It's right there. Uh, so it's not it's not really too far from the hives because you can see hives are right here. And I just want the ability to be able to walk back there and grab what I need and provide it to these guys. Because if these guys happen to struggle because of beekeeping error or maybe something weird happened, I went on a trip and came back and it just didn't work out. And they swarmed. But it's right there, and I'll get you closer so you can see what it looks like. Maybe I'll stop shaking. All right. Here we are. We're back at the swarm traps. As uh, top of my head, but we're back at the swarm traps, and I mean, this is the tree, there's your root system, I got to set up the ladder there, and then I climb the ladder, and I can get up there. Now, you may be able to see that there's some bees kind of still milling about, but most of them are, uh, are done and gone. The frames we took out of there, we put in a nucleus hive. And that did have the queen in there. So it, it was interesting because it already had a colony with a queen. We added a box in between, so it was an empty box. And then on top, we added the box from this swarm trap. And that's just because the, the original nuke that was there was too, it was too small. It was a really small colony, and we wanted to bolster it. And I, I said, hey, we're going into spring. Let's go ahead and get rid of, you know, the bees that are in the swarm trap. And we'll move into that nucleus hive. If the queens battle it out, let's see if it really does create a monster. And it didn't. They, um, they actually stayed in their separate boxes. And later on, we, we actually took one of the two queens out to provide it to a different hive. So it having a resource swarm trap is just one of those benefits where you can get honey out of it you can get brood you can get eggs and in this case we even stole a queen out of there and put it in another hive and i just published a video for our members that shows you how i installed that queen and you know what a benton box is uh, easiest way to install the queen so you don't have to worry about hanging her in between boxes or if she's being fed any of that it's just put it in there and come back three, four days later and see if she got let out or what happened to her. So that's the, the pluses of having those swarm traps. And I'm glad that we cleared out the swarm trap because there's bees checking it out right now. The second one, you can kind of see whoop, one right there. It's also being checked out by bees. So that kind of tells me one of the hives in my apiary is, you know, about to swarm. I mean, we got drone brood in basically all of the hives at this point. And when you start seeing that capped over in the corners, that's when, you know, they're telling you, hey, we're, we're about to bounce out of here. Sometimes they're just making brood, uh, drone brood for the mating season. But for the most part, if, if your hive is overrunning with, with drone uh, comb in the corners, you're going to have a problem in the next, like, 10, 15 days. So us knowing that, we're doing an experiment here where we're gonna go ahead and swap queens in our apiary. We'll take it from one hive and introduce them to a different one and that one will move to another one as well. That way we can see if, if maybe that will be one of our techniques in the future for suppressing uh, swarming because they're getting a new queen, there's gonna be a brood break and coming out of winter, they'll knock down some mites too. Let's see, what else can I show you? We've been doing a lot here in the apiary. I, uh, I got the chickens out. Oh, I can do this. Got the chickens out there right there. And we use these guys for, uh, as one of our pest management. Hi guys. 
they want out so bad. They're not used to not being out. But we use them for pest management. We'll put them uh, in the tractor next to the hives that keeps them localized. And then they'll eat the larvae that are in the ground around the hive. And the reason behind that is uh, the small hive beetle larva will end up crawling out the front of the hive and then they'll fall into the ground to pupate and that's when they become a beetle. So if you have your chickens down and around, you don't have to put them in a tractor, but if they're down and around the, the hive, they'll eat up those larvae and then you can reduce the amount of hive beetle you have. You're not gonna eradicate it, but you can reduce it. Um, another way for that's nematodes. If you're uh, interested in you know, growing some nematodes and they, they eat a uh, hive beetle. I want to show you my other hives we got going. So right now we have our coffee and we put the names in front so that when you walk by you can you can tell that's not supposed to happen. We'll take that off. But it is on a better B uh, solution scale. I think it's just B solutions actually. And it's a pretty awesome scale. We got it for free from one of the uh, conferences, beekeeping conferences we went to. So if you get a chance to go to those beekeeping conferences, you could end up winning something or being part of an experiment, a uh, graduate study, and get something for free like this. I mean, this thing costs two to $400. So pretty cool to have it for free. And our coffee hive is hanging out on it and we can track its weight throughout the year and the temperature. We have a nuke that we closed up because even before winter really started, there was robbing going on and we thought there were bees in there and there's definitely not. And this is our St. Patrick hive. We, uh, we just put a new bottom board on. It's one of the fancy ones that, that I had made. It's all solid. We like the solid bottom boards because we don't, we don't need the extra ventilation here. I mean, it gets really hot, but they'll take care of that. Uh, if anything, I'll put a uh, I'll put a shim in with an entrance, but look at that. We got eight frame brood, another eight frame brood box, and then two shallows and a hog half comb up there. So hog half comb has a bunch of little cassettes in there that uh, that will, the bees will, you know, get up there and fill. And then I can just take them out, put some caps on there, and they're good to go. I can go ahead and sell them. Here's our long lang. Let me get a better, better angle. So I just put the uh, the bungee cord on there because it's not loose. It actually the top fits really tight. But I'm just thinking that throughout the year, I, whatever wear and tear happens, I want to make sure it stays closed. And there's our entrance with our bees coming in and out. A fancy logo. We also have these other things. Uh, these other logos on here too, just a little bit of art that I was going to put on a box and I ended up using this, but uh, it's the discover the real honey.com, the goodness. And that's uh, North Carolina's program for tracking who's selling honey. But, and then we have our cool little spinner. I put the spinners in front of the hive so the bees get used to some sort of movement in front. And then that way, if, uh, if I'm moving in front of it like I am, they're kind of used to something being there moving. They're not on alert. And here's our long ling. I was trying to stay quiet because I had a bee around my face and I don't want to be stung in the face on live video. That'd be terrible. And it's still kind of there. But here's our worry. We, uh, we ended up switching the boxes a little bit. So both of the bottom boxes are empty. We use painter's tape just to seal up any cracks and then the bees will propolize it. And later on we can just take that tape off and you know, whenever we do inspections, 
boom, we'll just put the box right back on and uh, it'll be fine. But we'll take a look at the back where they're, oh, that's where that went, where they're, uh, they're actually in. And you can see with the War A that they will attach the comb to the window. So even though last season we cut all of this off and then we didn't really clean the window, but we cut it all off. You can tell that here they've reconnected it and they filled it with uh, nectar again. So that's kind of a pain. But once you get in there for the first time in the season, cut that, they're not gonna, they're not gonna reconnect it. So you'll be fine there. It's just, man, with war A's, the first couple of minutes is always a mess. Same thing here. Oh, well, that's kind of fun. I don't know how focused that's going to get, but you can, you can actually see the nectar level filling up there. And so I, I equate uh, the war A's that are set up like this, kind of like to the flow hive. You like seeing your nectar build up and that's what the flow hive does too. It, it'll show you a cross cut of your honey supers and the frames, and then you can, you can fill or see each of them fill up. And that, that's pretty awesome. And then I put the window, this window on the side, just because it's good to get both views. So I can look in and see, oh, they haven't done anything yet. And another bee just said, hey, what are you doing? Which is fine. These these bees are all super docile. They'll come and give you five, six, seven, eight, nine warnings before they end up stinging you. And as long as you can detect what the warnings are, such as flying in front of your face in a back and forth manner, you're good to go. I mean, if they bump you in the head, that's like their last, last ditch effort to say, hey, get out of here. Anybody have any questions about swarm traps or, or our apiary setup? This is our giant pergola. Later on in the year, um, the grapes will grow on it and that will, that will serve as a windbreak. It, uh, it'll have hops on one side and grapes on the other. So that's pretty fancy, at least I think. Got two more hives over there, chicken coop, and then our Hulk hive, and we call it the Hulk hive because the first year we put a bee in it, or a queen bee, we, uh, we marked her green because that was the color of the year and I spilled paint all over her. So she, she was all green and we just called her the Hulk. But this hive is pretty cool because it's got, it's got a bunch of activity at the bottom and then I have a shim with an entrance and there's activity there too. Plus, they have this little entrance on the side that they like to use. You'll see the bee come out. Boop, there they are. So they'll come out of there. And then I got to tape this up because I don't like entrances on the back. But there's a little nook right there. And they'll crawl in and out of there. And that's all because I build my own boxes. And that's under that wood or under that paint is um, really rough cut wood. So... Yeah, things like that happen. Let's see, we'll go check, we'll walk around and we'll, we'll check some of our other, oh, would you mind showing a catch box? Yes, I can do that. I'm sorry, I didn't realize if the camera was on the other side, I'm not seeing any questions. So let's, let me do that so you're not looking up my nose. So we'll, I'll come over here. This one's a little bit easier to see. Sorry for the bounciness. I'll try and stabilize. <laughs> Double chin. All right, here you go. So this is our swarm trap. And all it does is you got, we got bees in it right now. Uh, actually, I'm gonna take that back. We got scout bees right now. They shouldn't be in there, but this will move and you can just close them up and then they're stuck in there, but I, I do that at night. So if I want to move, uh-oh, get out of there, you. Okay, I'll take care of that later. But at night, you go ahead and close that, and then you can move it off your property for 
up to three miles or three miles or more, excuse me, three miles or more and set them up in whatever hive box you want. And when you're done doing that, wait two or three days, bring them back to your property and set them in the apiary where you want them. This is because right now these, these girls, if they've actually moved in, then they're going to orientate to this spot. And no matter where you put them in your apiary, they're going to go ahead and remember this spot. So even if I took this off the tree, which that's the next question, how did I attach it? So the typical way to attach, can I zoom in? Aha! I just use a piece of timber and I screw it to the tree up there. And back here, I just have it attached with a block. Um, Sorry that that's all shaky. Um, attach it to a tree with a block. The typical way to do it is cut a hole in that, in that plank. And then you can drill a hole into the tree, use a dowel rod, put the dowel rod in there, and hang the swarm trap from that. So when you climb up on the ladder, all you got to do is lift up and take it off. So hopefully that helps. But... Yeah, I put, uh, I modified that one because I put a, a nucleus top on top of it. I was getting sick of the bees kind of going in and out of the side with the migratory top. What bait did you use? So I used the Brood, uh, uh, sorry, Swarm Commander. It's the, can I get it out of there? No. I got another war, uh, another Swarm Trap style, but it's a uh, Swarm Commander. And it is, it looks like a air freshener in your car, like a soft, spongy air freshener. Those are better, I think, than the spray or the vials. The vials have never worked for me. The spray didn't really work, but the little air fresheners that hang that have like their logo on it, super awesome. I've used them for three years. Each time you take them off, store them in a Ziploc bag, and you're good to go. I'm going to show you this one. So this is my Ware Swarm Trap, and you may see some bees checking it out. Uh, what they'll do is they'll, they'll go inside a Swarm Trap, they'll walk all around the inside, they'll come outside, and they'll walk all along the outsides, and basically mapping it to make sure that they're good to go. Sorry, I was going to see if we could look in and see that, that Swarm Commander. But you just hang it from the first frame as close to the entrance as possible, and it'll attract the bees into it. And all the War A has is top bars across the top. There's no frames in there. So when they draw down, they're drawn down as far as they can until about three fourths from the bottom of the box here. So they'll be big, big uh, top bars without any frames coming out of there. Lots of wax. So we'll take those out and we'll stick them into the, the War A hive that we have and as I build more boxes we'll stack more boxes on there and then we'll do cut comb honey let's see can you see her show up ah. oh there she goes and that's pretty typical if you walk up and tap the front um, if there's a bee in there they'll they'll come out and check it out see what's what's going on because they're evaluating the hive right now to see if it's a new home for them See any other questions? Nope. Sorry, still pretty new at this. Would be, yep. But that's our uh, that's our apiary, that's our hives, and you'll notice that the the other ones, uh, hey, no problem. The other uh, swarm traps are a bit lower. They're in better spots, so I I don't fall off the ladder and die. Um, the ones in the back here, I, I like them up in the hedge because there's a lot of ants back here, cockroaches, um, some other bugs. I can never remember the name. I always call them scallywags. Uh, they're long, thin bugs with uh, pincers on the, on the back, back end. But I like it back here because when bees get into those, those swarm traps, all the ants and everything else does too, and then the bees will start propolizing. 
propolizing and propolizing. So that's another bonus. If you wanted to come back to your swarm trap, take off all the propolis from the top and then make a tincture out of it, you could do that. It would just keep refreshing. You wouldn't have to use a propolis trap or anything like that. that that's going to take everything from them. You could just scrape it right off the top and you're good to go. Well, that's that's 20 minutes. If anybody else has anything, uh, I can keep walking around that apiary. I don't know how the wind's doing with the mic, but hopefully you're not hearing anything because it's pretty windy. Anyway, if nobody else has any questions about the, the swarm trap, then I'll say thanks for watching and have a great day. Now I got to figure out how to turn it off.